Catch a vibe with Big Hass only on Pulse. Pulse 95. And we're going to say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, which means peace be upon you. And hello and welcome to a new episode of Catch a Vibe, which is obviously Pulse's first uh, and only music dedicated radio show in it. We humanize the artists, the singers, the songwriters, the musicians, the music enthusiasts, um, anyone who is into academia and music. Um, I want to shout out all everybody that came in through on the show over 100 plus episodes right now shout out to all of you guys it's been amazing uh, for me personally just to get to know you on a human level and this is why I do this you know show and obviously Pulse 95 Radio Sharjah's first and only English radio station speaking of Sharjah we gotta speak about the Sharjah Performing Arts Academy now I have a big 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 respect To each and everybody that works in this amazing, beautiful, iconic academy, um, what they're doing, you know, obviously for the scene, what they're doing for theater, what they're doing for music, what they're doing for art, what they're doing for culture is phenomenal, in my opinion. For you, for them to be giving a a platform for people to be able to express themselves in the best way, especially in, in, in our part of the world, it's a big deal. So that's one. Number two, when you are actually getting to meet the music director, right? Um, you know, at Charger Performing Arts Academy and get to know him a little bit. And obviously uh, a, a passionate tutor, somebody who's so passionate about, you know, music and academia, somebody um, who has a lot of experience. Um, he has, you know, a, a lot of experience, you know, working, you know, on, 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 on stuff like the, the Mama Mia's and, and many others. I'm telling you, there's so much more that we're going to find out, you know, today from our guest. Um, he has worked as a conductor and also a, a vocal, you know, obviously supervisor for Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, which is based in Miami. Um, you know, conducted productions of like We Will Rock You, like I said, Mamma Mia, Greece, supervised, um, you know, signature production shows. For me, this show is all about getting to know him on a human level and also getting acquainted with this whole music director academia vibe. So we're going to put our hands together for the incredible Chris Santillan. Um, Chris, how are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Thank you so much for uh, coming through, man. I really appreciate you. Um, we're going to start from the beginning, uh, Chris. Um, how? What was your introduction, you know, to music generally like early early on how did Chris get introduced you know to music it's a great question um, I think about this a lot actually going back I pro- probably backed even to grade one or grade two nice um, I just remember being so um, captivated by seeing live music my first concert actually I think it was around six and my aunt took me to see Celine Dion in concert oh. I'm from Canada from Ottawa, the nation's Shout capital. Out Canada. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and I just remember being just truly captivated by seeing her perform live. And um, just wow, how old, how old were you? I think I was around six. Wow. Maybe maybe seven. And this was you know just after Titanic, of course, had just yeah. come out. So she was you know really just going big at the time. And um, after that, I was just like, wow, I, I music, I love this. How can I keep doing this? And shortly after, actually. You know, now I play piano, but at the time I was really interested in the drums. Mm, so I started I was, looking. Yeah, I love drums. It's great, right? I was just really captivated by rhythm, percussion, uh, percussion instruments, and I asked my parents, you know, can I start taking music lessons? And they started to look for music schools for me. Funnily enough, they all wanted me to learn piano first okay. to get a foundation in wow. music. But there was one school I found, and they're like, yeah, we'll take you on as a drum student. <laughs> and I was eight, started drum lessons, okay. and I mean, that's a short story. That's crazy. Um, if I may push a little bit on the Celine Dion. So you were like seven or eight years old. You, what was it that captivated you? What, what, what was it? Is the, emo- the emotions as a, as a seven-year-old? What was it that led you, sparked something in you? I think there's... Maybe two main things. The first one is just this sense of unity that you have when you see a live mm. performance, right? Here are thousands of people all united yeah. in the same time and space oh. to see someone perform. And that's just a magical part of it. Secondly, just the spectacle itself. You know, you have lights, you have live musicians on stage, mm. you have just brilliant musicianship. Like the technicality of it. You yeah. like that. Wow. Uh, so uh, th- those two things to me. Now, looking back on it, I don't know if I realized that when I was six or seven. Yeah, but yeah. If I look back on that, I think those are two things that but that's stay ama- with me. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. As a, because I, I don't think everybody hears music like that and for you I mean it was like meant to be and look, look at you right now you're obviously you know lead tutor music director at you know the, you know the SPAA which is amazing um, before we get into that you started drums right how did the drums piano uh, shift happen 
Another great question. <laughs> <laughs> so we, you know, I played drums for about six years. Was really into it. Was leaning towards jazz drumming. Six actually. years. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Jazz drumming? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. That's so much hip hop right there. Uh, I know exactly right. And mm. my drum teacher. Well, you know, I was learning funk drumming. I was Ooh. learning jazz, a bit of everything. But he was like, "You need to get into jazz drumming." At the same time, you know, I was a clarinet player in a high school band. We're talking, you know, around grade seven. Wow. And it just so happens that one of the big Broadway shows at the time playing in Toronto was Mamma Mia. No way. So here I am, grade seven. We have mm. a school trip to Toronto for a band competition, and we get tickets to see Mamma Mia. So, overture starts. And I'm just again captivated by what I'm witnessing here, just like uh, earlier at the concert when I was six or seven. And then I was like, "Who's this person conducting the show in the orchestra pit, playing piano?" I was like, "That sounds wow. like an amazing job." Wow! So I left the theater that day. Again, you know, another awakening moment. Crazy! And I'm like, I need to start learning piano, you know, because drums are great, but I want to be playing melodies. I want to be doing stuff like this, conducting shows. So sure enough. Mamma Mia was the first professional production I saw, and that's what got me started in piano. That that is an insane story. Wait, uh, so this rings a bell, I guess. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a fascinating story! Subhanallah. God bless, Chris. You went to see Celine Dion, spark something in you. You know, a few years later, you know, you went to see Mamma Mia. Shifted from playing drums. To, to the piano. How, how was that shift? Like, uh, tell me more about it. Like, when when you're doing the drums, how did you shift to uh, to piano? Tell me the process more. Well, I uh, I, I guess start, I started by teaching myself. You know, because I had a, a basic foundation in rhythm mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. reading musical notation. Uh, but then I remember ordering um, a piano book, you know, a teach yourself method. And then I asked my parents for a keyboard and I got wow. my first Casio 61 key keyboard in uh-huh. the basement of my parents' place. <laughs> and every day after school, I'd just be there teaching myself, learning what a scale is, learning where all the notes are, and then trying to teach myself how to play a song by ear. Self-taught. Well, at the beginning, yeah, and then yeah. it got to a certain level. And I'm like, okay, now I should probably start taking lessons. So I, I went back to the same music school I had started learning drums but this time to study piano and I went through the classical um, method the Royal Conservatory of Music that is very popular in Canada and Mm. started going through the levels and I love classical music I love all kinds of music Um, you know but I love learning the repertoire at the same time I was getting to know more musical theater repertoire more pop and rock Uh, started learning I love Elton John and one of my big heroes so I started trying to play some of his songs by ear Mm. watching videos of him playing just trying to capture the whole sense of of a pianist and what what uh, how I could be on stage when performing and and how to you know I'm not a composer but how to get into the mind of a composer Insane. and how they craft songs. What a story! What and this is just our first segment. Before we take a break, a couple of things for you. Um, in this region, as 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 Arabs, when when the when the son or daughter tells their parents I want to do music, there's a lot of like how you know like how are you gonna make a living, man, or, or like you know my, you know my daughter how are you gonna make a living. In your case, so far, what I'm hearing, you had very supportive parents. Um, what were their thoughts, initial thoughts, when you when you really got into it? Mm. Yeah, gr- great question. <laughs> I, they, like you said, they were very supportive throughout all of this. I mean, at this time, I was still do- doing Wait, this on the side. Shout, shout out to them, then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Big okay. love to mom and dad. Bless. Um, you know, and then at, at the time, I, as I went into... Uh, post-secondary studies I was thinking about medical school I really love sciences and I'm like wow. I'll just keep music as a hobby okay 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 but then there just came that pivotal moment where it's like I just love doing these shows you're and passionate I'm, about and it. I'm gonna try to do this and I'm gonna go all in on it and my parents were always like you know whatever makes you happy and as long as as you know what you want to do God bless will support you so yeah so then I ended up doing going into music school and you know that's as amazing. they say the rest is history that's amazing man wow we are with uh, you know Chris uh, Satian who is just incredible ladies and gentlemen he is the elite tutor music director at the Sharjah Performing Arts Academy. Um, amazing story. Just getting to know how the world works, how he saw Celine Dion, how he went to saw Mami and Mamma Mia, and right now, who the human that he is. Um, we're going to take a, br- a break, Chris, but I want to put you on the spot if you don't mind. This is a music, obviously, a radio show. And for the people listening in their cars right now, we got to take a break. And obviously, they need to hear a song. So the question on the spot is, we can play any song in the world, anything at all. But it has to be clean, obviously. What song would we play? You're the DJ. What do we play? <laughs> okay, that is putting me on the spot. I know, yeah, there's well, so much. I mean, just 
Maybe as a little tribute for the fact that it was one of the first songs I learned to play by ear on piano. How Which, do you feel about Goodbye Yellow Brick Road from Elton John? Taking it back to 1971. Let's do that. Oh my God, I love it. I love it. This is incredible. We're going to be right back, you guys. Let's play this. And we're going to be right back. Pulse 95 Radio with the amazing Chris Santian. Catch a vibe with Big Hess. Only on Pulse. Pulse 95. Pulse only on Pulse95 Radio, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we just heard this beautiful, iconic record, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Um, Chris, thank you for letting us play. What does this record mean to you? Uh, well, I mean, this is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, learning piano by ear. I, I tried to really develop my ear, and I just remember trying to figure out that beginning progression. You know, mm. it's just same chord, but then the bass line is moving, yeah. and then, you know, the lyrics come in. At the time, I didn't fully pay attention to the lyrics, but it's just that, you know, that moment where you're like, a song captivates you, it's it's melody, it's harmony, the arc of it, and it's like, I want to learn that. And then the drums come in, and you know, as a drummer in me, it's like, <sighs> yeah. Love it. Yeah, iconic record for sure, man. Wow. Sir Elton John. Um, wow, wow, wow. Um, Chris, obviously, uh, you're, uh, we definitely want to talk about the SBAA and how you move here to the UEE, but um, t- tell me more about... Um, your, your passion as an educator, right? You obviously, you, you, there's so many musicians. You play the drums. You play the drums. You play the piano. You play the clarinet. What else am I missing? That's, those are the main ones. I okay. did try trumpet for a few weeks, but Whoa, that didn't go too well. <laughs> trumpet. I love it. Okay, so as a musician, you play these, obviously. But when or before that, where did your passion to teach or academia come in? Was there a spark as well for that? Yeah, I think even going back to when I was younger, I remember I have a younger brother, uh, f- four years younger, and I remember in elementary school, he'd come home, I'd try to help him with his homework, you know, and I would like try to play the teacher, you know, I just loved, you know, helping mm. helping him out with his homework, and then that turned into tutoring on the side, because I just, you know, really had a passion for learning, wow. and the learning process, and um, I guess as I got older and kept going with music, I realized that I also loved to teach music, so that's, teaching has always been, to me, hand in hand with what I do as, as a performer, and Sorry, helping your brother help you realize that you love teaching music? Well, at the time, it would be just teaching in general. Yeah, you know, okay. I love, you know, he'd have questions about his homework. I'd help, mm. you know, and that's, I think, where I developed my, my skills as, uh, as a teacher because you have to be able to listen to, you know, what, what is the problem that we're trying to solve? Is, gr- is learning happening? How can we help foster learning? And then eventually, as I got more into music, you know, in my teen years, I started to teach piano, wow. a little bit of drums. So that really, I think, sparked the interest in teaching and then further on in music, uh, especially. Wow. Um, very random question. Live performances, when you performed uh, you know, for pia- piano, drums, take me through that. What was the feeling like? Because I'm trying to establish right here, obviously, when you're a performer, why, why did you choose, obviously, you know, the... the the, the academia road, what, what, you know? Mm. Did you perform like for the public when you're playing the piano or, 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 or drumming? Yeah, several times. I mean, uh, most recently and for the past decade or so, it's been mostly piano. And um, I'm, as I'm sure we'll talk about uh, later on, you know, especially with musical theater productions, mm. as a music director, you are involved in the shows as mm. a conductor or uh, as a pianist, and often both, because many shows these days are conducted from the piano. Mm-hmm. And it's an incredible feeling to be live, you know, again, in that live performance space, and you have the, the audience, you can feel that energy in the audience. And then uh, that sense of, you know, whatever happens, happens, because it's live entertainment, live Love performance. I, I, guess, I guess what I'm trying to say as well, like, it, it, it's hard. What's the challenge of anybody who's a musician also being a, a, a teacher? Where, where, where's the line? Um, obviously, you have to have the passion for it, which you do. But what's, how do you answer this question? Like, how do you talk about it from a musician and an educator point of view, if you know what I mean? Yeah, I think uh, what I try to do in my teaching is to, to let my experience in the real world as a performer um, use that as a starting point of how can I help my students. Love right? it. It's not just about the theory. Thank you for saying that. It's not just about the theory. It's not just about the readings. It's about how do we, what do we do when we encounter these real life problems in the world? How do we make this mentality viral? What you just said. Great question. I think it's it's uh, a lot of it's collaboration. Mm. Educators meeting together, especially educators in the performing arts, because the approach to teaching the performing arts is slightly different than the sciences and and math, which is all great. But there's it's very much um, based on 
uh, studio instruction. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what we do at Sharjah Performing Arts Academy, we really focus on studio-based instruction, small classes. So everyone has uh, the mm -hmm. time to have one-to-one -one feedback mm -hmm. and that uh, it's all practical-based. So yes, there's reading involved. There's going to be maybe watching some documentaries to, to know a bit about the history and about yeah. the theory that yeah. what we're working on, but it's all practical. Man, th th this is like really music to me. I, I love it, you know. Um, you take me back to um, a, a place where I really wished I got into that, um, you know. Um, so just meeting you right here, you know, is, is um, yeah, super, super cool. A, a big one applause to you, man. Like just, wow. Um, okay, the, the, the move to the UAE, the move to the United Arab Emirates, how, how did it happen? You know, tell me more. How did the SPAA, Chris, meet? Mm. Uh, just tell me more about, about that. Yeah, I was, uh, as you mentioned earlier, I was a conductor and vocal supervisor for Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines mm. based in Miami. And I was on a ship at the time. I was conducting uh, Greece, the musical on uh, on their uh, ship, Harmony of the Seas, okay. which uh, I loved. And I, that was my third uh, contract or third show uh, with the company. And I was looking ahead and I was like, it'd be nice to do something a little bit different, uh, maybe get back on land for a little bit. Nice. Um, and it just so happened that this job opportunity, uh, being a music director for Spa, came up wow. uh, that I saw on, on a Facebook group or something. And uh, I guess it's one of those things where the timing just lands properly. And I was like, you know, I'd always been interested in, in Dubai in this region and wanting to do something in this part of the world. So I sent in my, my CV and uh, Next a few thing. months later, yeah, here you we got are. got the call. <laughs> That's amazing. Is, how long you been now at uh, the, the SPA? So I arrived in August 2022. So I'm going on my third Bless. teaching year. Hey, respect, sir. Okay. Um, before we take a break, I got to ask you. I got to ask you this. From, um, was this your first time in the UAE when you came through here? here? First time, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, a couple of questions. How, what was your first reaction when you when you came to Sharjah? Well, like, tell me your first things that went through your mind. Uh, yeah, I guess a bit of a sense of s surreal experience. I mean, I remember my flight was like four hours delayed coming from Toronto, so I got in super late. <laughs> so, really, the first memory was just a short ride to yeah. the airport hotel. Yeah. But the next day, the uh, first trip I made was to Dubai Mall, and okay, it was just wow. you know, of, you know, yeah, that's of all a, places that's, to go for the that's first a big time. Big mall, my brother. Overwhelming, <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, but really great, just from the people I was meeting and helping me to get set up here yeah. and, and the staff mm. at Spa are, are wonderful and accommodating and just an overall amazing first experience and that has continued to this day. Yeah, that's amazing. When you first saw Spa as an institution, like, you know, physically, the architecture, what was, the, because I get blown away every time. Yeah, and I still do. <laughs> I mean, just entering the facilities for yes. the first time and entering, you know, with the beautiful uh, lobby and mm. just seeing the quality of, of uh, the studios and the instruments and all the investment that's been made yes. to uh, to make this vision a reality. I was isn't it fascinating? It's amazing. It is. Oh man, um, I still have a lot of more questions on that, but I'm going to put you on the spot again, um, Chris. Um, we're going to take a break. What do we play for the people right now? Like, you know, give me an idea. Um. All right. Mm. So well, we played Elton John. Sorry, so Elton played, John in the beginning. Now, what do we do? Well, how do you feel about going into the musical theater world a little bit? Let, please, let's yeah? go, because that's what we're talking about next. Okay, tell me. Okay. So there's a great uh, S a Stephen Sondheim show called Merrily We Roll Along. Okay. And we did some ex excerpts of the show uh, last year with some students. So how about we play a little bit of Merrily We Roll Along? We're going to do that. That's amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be right back. We are with Chris Asantian, who is, of course, in the lead uh, you know, Twitter um, music director at the Sharjah Performing Arts Academy. Just incredible. Just the amount of knowledge and the passion that he has. Oh, man. Oh, man. We're going to be right back. Keep a luck. Let's go. Catch a vibe with Big Hass. Only on Pulse. Pulse 95. Pulse. Pulse 95 Radio. Catch a vibe, ladies and gentlemen, which is, of course, Pulse's first and only music dedicated radio show. We just heard this. Merrily, we roll along. Where does this take you, Chris? I mean, this is, uh, f first of all, Stephen Sondheim, one of the great um, musical theater writers. Um, uh, who unfortunately passed away, um, Rest but you know his legacy remains. And uh, this is a show that I really only discovered uh, last year as we were delving into some of uh, some study with it, with the scenes and some of the music with our uh, students. And 
it just brings me back to why I do what I do. I love telling stories through music. And this piece, this is an example um, of a piece that actually goes backwards in time. And mm. it focuses on three characters, uh, Franklin, mm. Mary, and Charlie. And how, uh, you know, Franklin becomes a, a popular composer. Okay. Uh, and maybe a little bit disillusioned over time and kind of <laughs> lost track of the real mm. meaning of life. And then it goes back in time and sees how these pivotal moments in time kind of messed up their friendship. Wow. Uh, so it's just an amazing thing about focusing on your dreams in life, but mm. also not letting go of the people around us wow. that are important to us. Yeah. So it's just really one of those shows that touches on the core of, of mm. humanity, I think. Yes, I love that. Speaking of that, when it comes to you know music theater and all that, um, for people who don't know what it is, like they're listening right now, like yeah, they know the you know the Justin Bieber's, the Celine Dion's, the Drakes, they know that. Mm. Okay, cool. We this music. Okay, um, Elton John. But what is music theater? As as simple as it is, and you can explain it to the people, the regular Joe or the mm. regular Mohammed. So th- the way I see it is, uh, it's theater where we use music to help heighten the story. That's to me the short form. This is why he's <laughs> incredible. I mean, this is it. Drop the mic, Chris. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Um, so we get to a point in a story where we feel uh, the urge. So we get whether it could be anger, it could be love, it could be surprise, it could be introspection. Mm. But we get to a point where music will do the job better, in a sense, to convey these emotions, these situations. So it's a heightened form of of uh, theater, I would say. Wow. Um, I love how you said that. Um, going back to um, SPAA, your your thoughts as someone who's, you know, obviously been there three years right now, your initial thoughts um, on, on, on the vibe, how students are getting this whole thing. How, you know, obviously you're very passionate. The program is incredible. But how are they receiving it? And what, what are you seeing, you know, from them? Yeah, it's been a really positive um, process for the past few years. We are very excited. We just had our first uh, graduating cohort Mm. uh, graduate earlier this year. Thank you, yes. Amazing. (laughs) Congrats. And, um, you know, we continue to develop and we continue to reflect on the program and how we're serving our students, how we're serving building the industry as well in this region because that is one of the goals as well. Mm. We're building the, the, the theater and musical theater industry here. And so far, like I said, the the response has been positive. We have some of our graduates have gone on to do work now with Norwegian Cruise Line. They've been accepted into master's programs in the U.S. and in the U.K. And, um, and uh, you know, we're also constantly getting their feedback on what do they feel they need. Okay. What are the, what what's working? Mm. What what is a repertoire that they would like to look at uh, look into further? Because we have a lot of obviously a lot of repertoire from the West, but what's really exciting is that we have a lot happening in the region. Yes. Um, really exciting right now, we have the Lazor brothers, mm. who are uh, Lebanese-American writers, and they were um, in residence with us uh, a while back to, to do what we call a development project. So they were um, working with our students to write a piece. And at the moment, they're in New York uh, with their show, We Live in Cairo. So yeah. we have voices from the region who are you know, starting to be heard and make it uh, in the region and also abroad. So it's an exciting time all around. You said something exciting. Um Music theater and in this region is still a bit, you know, very young, like a, a baby, right? What, in your opinion, as someone who's passionate and very experienced about this, what does this need, this region? Obviously, more SPAA, which we were doing, but what else do we need? What, what do we need in order to flourish and become? You can, because every time you talk about music theater, you always talk about the West, to be honest, right? Mm. It's not a lot of here. Mm-hmm. How do we change that narrative? Well, I think. P- Maybe the first step is uh, conversations like this, mm-hmm. about, like you asked earlier. You know, what is musical theater? Yes. And um, yeah. Yeah. to me, there's no one answer, right? We all come from different backgrounds. Mm-hmm. You know, some of us come from the UK, uh, some of us from North America, mm-hmm. many of us, you know, from the region here. And how can we have these dialogues of what what is this art form and how are we trying to create this here and what does it look like uh, in this region? And then I think, you know, a strategic collaboration so that we know about events and that we're able to actually go see them. And, um, you know, we have many events throughout the year and many of them are free. Mm. Um, but as we continue to expand, you know, spreading the word in the region so that mm. people will come to fill the auditorium. Wow. Man, I love every single word. I would add personally for me, I think we need to talk to parents as well because there's a lot of, a lot of this whole thing is still there. Um, maybe people don't want to talk about it, but I'll talk about it. 
in terms of like this whole narrative about, hey, you want to be like an entertainer? You want to be like a musician? Well, how are you going to make money? Mm. 99% of the time, Chris, is that they're worried how they're going to make money. Now, I'm just using this for any parent who's listening. What do you tell them? How do people make money, make a living out of doing music theater? What are the options? Because mm. this is what are they worried about, by the mm-hmm. way. Parents are not worried about them doing music. They're worried about, because in this world, or in this part of the world, there's not a lot of opportunities for them to live. Mm-hmm. What's your answer to that? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the tough things, question, it's a tough question. It's a great question, <laughs> though, and something that we need to keep talking about. And, you know, one thing that we build into our program is entrepreneurial skills. So that, uh, especially in fourth year, students are starting to think, you know, marketing. What is marketing? How am I setting up my portfolio as an artist? What are the What is the skill set that I have, you know, yes, in performing, but maybe in some related uh, disciplines that wow. I can uh, use in, in the region, especially. So mm-hmm. I think part of it is, um, you know, we're not a business degree, but we do incorporate business related skills because promotion, you know, sometimes we don't like to talk about that side of, of the arts world, but yes. this is important, especially uh, today with all the, the media that we have for getting the word out there. And um, also, I think it goes back to, to collabor- co- uh, collaboration, you mm-hmm. know, working with others, you know, oh, I, I, I need someone to teach these classes or, uh, you know, mm-hmm. spreading the word in the region, whether it's in Dubai, in Sharjah, in the UAE mm-hmm. uh, in general. It's just spreading the word about opportunities. And, and um, you know, thankfully, we're starting to see more initiatives uh, that are supporting the arts and how can we get students involved. So I think at the end of the day, it is uh, it, like any profession. It's, it takes work, but I think... Um, you know, it's not shying away from mm. building those in- imperative uh, business skills along the way. I love that you said that because uh, <clears throat> for the longest period of time, I think our, our voices or our stories have been told for us, especially in this region. And I think art, music, you know, theater is one of those, you know, tools that we can express ourselves, um, <clears throat> you know, and, you know, His Highness is a big fan mm-hmm. of, of, of theater. B- quickly, how does that make you feel that obviously our ruler, the ruler of Sharjah, is a huge fan of theater. He's written, you know, theater. You know, he he's into that space. Mm-hmm. Well, firstly, what's the first, you know, reaction to that? <laughs> it's it's an incredible it uh, feeling. And every time I think about that, I'm just reminded of how grateful I am to be here and to to have this amazing support. Mm. Um, and I think it's a testament to the power of the arts in this region. Mm. And um, uh, so I'm just very grateful to be here, part of this vision of supporting the performing arts. And, and it's a big job because, like you say, it's not just a teaching aspect. Yes, yes. It's really growing this industry mm. from where it is and looking forward to the what the possibilities are. Um, how is how is Chris as a, te- as, a as a teacher like? Like, th- take me through. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he's smiling right now. But what's a, what's 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 your vibe like? What's what's a, what's the technique? Uh, I, I, like I said earlier, I think it's just to be, you know, I'm very real in the classroom. I am who I am. You know, I I, I, uh, I like to make jokes a lot. And, and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. <laughs> you know, if you're spe- listening right now, let me know. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's amazing. Okay. Um, but, you know, I just try to make things practical. And there's such a high level of excitement when it comes to music that I try to meet the students where they are with that excitement. And mm-hmm. be like, okay, what do we want to learn? Where are we headed? And how can I help? teach the musical skills that are needed to be the best musical theater performer. And some people are interested in teaching as well, perhaps. So it's, how can wow. I inspire them to heighten their their musical skills? That's amazing. Yeah. D- do you see some people are interested already in, in teaching, like right now after after being with you guys? Uh, yeah, we have many students who, who say, you know, my, my, especially by third or fourth year, they're like, oh, yeah, I've uh, really... Found myself. Yeah, and, and uh, teaching is a really valuable skill because you learn a lot by teaching. Yeah. So I always encourage students, even if they don't necessarily want to be teachers, try teaching a concept to another student who might be struggling a little mm-hmm. bit, and you're going to learn just as much as they are. Facts. Yeah, because if you t- can teach it, then... It's, you know it. You know it. Yeah, and yeah. it's also for me the giving back thing, and that's what I appreciate about you guys. Mm-hmm. You know, as uh, as 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 teachers, as educators, you're giving back to the community. This is knowledge. You know, we in hip hop, I love hip hop. You know, sharing is is really important. Knowledge is really important. You know, the, you have to spread that knowledge. You don't keep it to yourself. All, all these things are important, and teaching embodies that. Man, oh man, Chris Santian, you are incredible. Um, you know, like we're nearly towards the end, but we're gonna take a short break. Um, what's the song do we play for the people right now? Give me anything. Sure, I mean, let's stick in musical theater maybe, but like I mentioned earlier, the, the show We Live in Cairo, yeah. uh, maybe we can play a little excerpt from that. There's let's a do that. There's a piece called Wall Song. Um, Wall Song. Which is okay. uh, from their concept album a while back. So 
Okay, I can't wait. Okay, see, this is amazing. See, I'm getting also educated right here, ladies and gentlemen. Pulse 95 Radio with Chris Santian, who's the lead tutor, music director at the Charger Performing Arts Academy. Do not go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Catch a vibe with Big Hess, only on Pulse. Pulse 95. Pulse. Yeah, sit down. Pulse 95 Radio, ladies and gentlemen. This is um, Wall Song, it's called, right? Mm-hmm. So we are with Chris Santian, who is just incredible music director um, at the Sharjah Performing Arts Academy. Um, very, very passionate. Like throughout this interview, I may say this is amazing. Just vibing with it. Um, very, very passionate uh, about music, about education, uh, about theater, ladies and gentlemen. Really just amazing. Just you know, kind of scratching the surface. Um, towards the end, Chris, I kind of want to... Um, talk to you about let's start with challenges as chris throughout your years till now till this moment what has been a challenge or the some of the challenges that you faced that you can share with us what's what's the main challenge you faced and how did you get you know through that deep question I yeah know. great question i think as a music director one of the the big challenges which i love um mm. uh is that every show that I work on brings uh, a different challenge, musical challenge. Give me an example. So there's no one Broadway style. There's uh. not one musical theater style. Within musical theater, you have a show like Hamilton, which is hip hop <laughs> rap. Yeah. So you gotta be really well versed, or at least get to the level where you can be well versed with that repertoire. You have Stephen Sondheim, which is just its own uh, unique musical writing in mm. itself. Um, as we saw earlier, you know, we have shows with uh, voices from the, the Mena region now. So every show has a different musical style. So Correct. You know, um, th- one of the challenges is staying on top uh, of your game. So mm. when you have a new show, you need to learn the score. You need to learn the music. Uh, if it's piano, then you have to learn the piano part mm. for it. So it's always... But I think... Th- yeah. yeah, sorry to cut you off. But I think the lesson here is what you said. There's no one way to do it. Right? That's right. Yeah. I, I I think a lot of people box themselves and know this is I gotta stick to that, and yeah. this is where they fail. <laughs> I think that's what I love about musical theater is that every show uh, is different, and even if you come back and do the same show, like I've done Mamma Mia three or four times over the years, mm. and you know every time you're working with a different cast, maybe a different audience demographic. So there's always t- to me it's finding the newness. In every day, and even Oof. if it's practice, you know, because you got to practice, wait, wait, <laughs> right? Wait, wait, and that wait. takes time. Yeah, that, that was <laughs> that was my next question. For many of the music theaters, maybe this is uh, excuse my ignorance right here, but so many of the shows get, for example, repeated. You have even sometimes two, three times a day that they do the show. How do you, as a as as somebody working on the show, keep the performers high energy, mm. or they already came in with a high energy, like, I'm sure there is something to do with that, like, you, they keep repeating, repeating, and obviously there's new crowd coming in, mm-hmm. so the new energy, but the same performers, is there anything to that that you, you can talk about? Yeah, I think, it, especially when you're doing a long run of a show, yes. like, when I, we did Mamma Mia, you know, we did over 80 cities, Woo! and, you know, with a show like Mamma Mia, yeah. usually you're going to have that audience yes. uh, reaction throughout, because it's just a high energy show, but you know, once in a while you have that crowd where... You know, they're not really giving you the same that you had maybe yeah. with the show before. And it's just, it's always about the work. It's about the show. Mm. It's about the story that we are telling. Mm. And we're not, we have to, uh, and, and it's hard, but we have to not always uh, try to go for that audience reaction. So for me, you know, mm. when I, I was playing uh, the same keyboard book for yeah. over 180 shows. Yeah. And every night, you know, I go in, do my warm-ups, play yeah. a little uh, J.S. Bach, you know, to keep the, the, ch- yeah. the, the chops going. And uh, I would try to find newness in, in, you know, maybe there's a riff that I, I do with a bassist and, you know, I'm just really going to lock into trying to get this, like nail this and just savor this moment and, uh, you know, find new parts of the show to come back to and just savor, I guess That's is amazing. the right word, um, to keep it fresh and to keep it new and to keep your, your, um, yeah, morale your technical high development as well. Uh, yeah. As well. yeah. Amazing. Um, you said throughout this interview, you've worked on so many, you know, obviously theater production. Uh, maybe it's, a, again, you know, weird question, but do, do you have anything you're, in your mind as Chris to, to, to show us, to maybe write or to put together? This is your mm-hmm. own? <laughs> you mean like uh, to write my own show? Yeah. Uh, I keep thinking about it in the future and uh, I, I love collaborating so I would love to find whether it's uh, a lyricist or mm-hmm. a librettist someone who, who writes the script 
I keep think I feel like there might be something there, whether it's a full show or maybe like a song cycle or. or yeah, because for me, when I look at you and see you, I think there is a lot of things r right there. You know, especially right now that you've been here, I think you could be. You know, like yeah, I, I think there is something there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is one of the challenges that you can face later on, but you're something that you're open to. Yeah, and I think now I'm going to use this as an inspiration. To as a motivation. Like yeah. I dare you, Chris. <laughs> oh, man, this is incredible. Um, okay. Uh, dreams. What's a, what's a dream that you can share with us? What's what's your dream as, 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 as Chris? Um, well, honestly, and uh, my big dream is to keep doing this as, as long as, as possible. Are you I'm, living the dream now? I am living the dream. Mm. Um, when I made that switch to go away from a future in medical school, I just remember there was a lot of fe feelings and emotions making that decision. And uh, to me, everything has worked out. And it's been, you know, it's been a lot of work along the way, but I do feel very grateful mm. to be where I am. And I think every day I'm able to go to work and be like, I'm helping to build something. And I get so much energy back from our students. Amazing. And their energy and enthusiasm for the work just keeps me going. So, wow. you know, I do have dreams to just keep doing this you know, whatever specific. But that's incredible. And, and we want to give you your flowers. We want to empower you, for, empower you for that. And this is, I think, beautiful what you said. But also, you're a human being. You go through, you know, tough times. How do you deal with those days that you're not feeling this energy? Even if the students are giving it to you. But you're, you know, we all go through ups and downs. You as Chris, wh wh what do you do? Meditate, go for a run, you play a basketball, we play piano, what, what, go drums, <laughs> teach. <laughs> what do you do when you're feeling in, in, in these slow moments? Well, uh, you know, for me, physical activity is important, so I definitely like to keep active. Amazing. You know, maybe go to the gym. I often have like a playlist going. So if there's new repertoire I'm look I'm looking into, is you it know, music a theory, a theater as well? Uh, maybe it's that, or something. You know, <laughs> something musical that you know, album that just came out, and uh, you know, I'm a big fan of following the latest albums. Like recently, I'm a big Billy Joel fan, and there's Ooh. a live recording from the early '90s, and. I'll listen to that and I'm like, his technical chops were just on fire in this performance. And uh, it keeps me motivated, right? Like, oh, I just, I got to keep practicing. And, you know, if I don't feel like it in the moment, but, you know, it's it's a nice benchmark to kind of mm. help guide me uh, through that way. But, um, yeah, I think it's also being inspired, finding the opportunities where I can get inspired, going to other performances, mm. going to see other artists doing what they do. Nice. I get a lot out of that, and I think it's important as artists to do that. Wow. Um, when was the last time you've been to Canada? Uh, this summer. Oh, nice. Yeah. How was it? It was great. Uh, I love being back there and seeing family. Um, but, you know, with the cold weather coming up, I'm, I'm happy to miss uh, a few cold, months. <laughs> cold, cold weather, yeah. I mean, this is, is it true like this minus 30, minus 40 degrees like there? Is, it, is this the number? Yeah, it can get to minus 30 with the, with the wind. It can get up to feeling like minus 40. Minus 40? How, how is that like? It's, it's, it's not fun. <laughs> and it gets, you know, dark at 435 in oh, the evening. Man. And it's, it's not that great. <laughs> mm, man. Um, when you hear this song, what is it? Oh, yeah. See, I knew it. What is this? It's Piano Man. Yeah. Any, any memories? Because I believe, I believe in, in music, and it takes me back to some, somewhere, like where I was. Uh, I, you know, for example, I lost my father, you know, um, 15, uh, 18 years ago. Certain songs remind me of him, and I found myself obviously getting emotional. Where does this song take you? takes me back to seeing Billy Joel live at Madison Square Garden. Woo! What? Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> the Mecca. I've been, uh, I've been lucky to see him twice, and when he brings that harmonica out, you just know what he's going to sing next, yeah. and that's a, a, a memory I'll, just, I will, I'll never forget. What? You, live? That's incredible. Oh, speaking of that, now you open another domain. <laughs> Who are some of the artists that you've seen live that you really appreciate? Obviously, other than Celine Dion and Billy Joel. <laughs> So I've seen Elton John on his uh, oh, farewell wow. tour a couple of years ago. Yeah. What? That was a, a great concert. Oh, that's iconic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really need to get out to see more more artists because, like I said, seeing live performances is, is so important. Uh, but I think those are the three. Uh, you know, ABBA, they're not performing live anymore, but mm. I went to see the ABBA Voyage um, production Ooh. in London last year. Who, who's uh, someone you really want to see? Ooh. Like... If you have the if catch your vibe, Pulse 95 radio right, right now, right now can transform you anywhere and get you the front row ticket to see anything, what would it be? Wow, what a <laughs> great question. <laughs> um, 
So I'm a big singer-songwriter fan as well, and uh, as, as a Canadian as well. I'd love mm. to see Joni Mitchell. Woo! Um, I know she's doing some some yeah. concerts. I just a uh, legend. Yeah, just a legend, a, a songwriter. And, yeah. Uh, I I think there's so many others that will probably come to mind, but uh, you know we can just learn so much from those who have been in this industry for for Agreed. a while and gone through the challenges, but also the the highs of it. And yeah, man, um, man. Uh, by the way, in the background, this is um, Iraqi uh, kanun player. His name is Furat Kaduri. Mm. Um, I'm a big fan of this instrument, and uh, yeah, he's just uh, um, yeah incredible. Um, what's one thing? that people might be surprised to hear about you or one thing that not a lot of people know about you ask chris like now if people are they know you but uh-huh. they're like huh, oh, i didn't know that what would it be uh <laughs> well good question i think many people don't know like that you're I, like hip-hop right now <laughs> like, <laughs> i'll be shocked <laughs> no but i love all types of music like every genre um i mean many people don't know that i'm half mexican you know, I'm like g- going back to my last name. You know, Bless. Okay, so okay, okay. I, uh, and that's it, it, well. We, now you know, and now you know. And if we go into the musical side of that, like growing up, you know, it was just such a oh. such a fascinating collection of you know French Canadian artists like Celine Dion, and yeah. then also uh, just music from from Mexico and, and the the Latin side of it. So I think that's, that's probably, insane. Yeah, just it just clicked right. Yeah, French Canadian, <laughs> Mexican. So, what a mix, right? <laughs> what a mix. So. Um, yeah, I think that's a little well, a uh, little known fact because many people don't know that. And um, you know, obviously, I was born and raised in Canada, but I do carry that. And I was thankful to be in Mexico this summer and, and reconnect oh, with that part of my heritage because wow. it's just a beautiful country. And how, how important was it for you? It was super important. Yeah, I went with my dad, and it was a really important uh, trip just to, to reconnect. It had been over uh, ten years since mm-hmm. I'd been back to Mexico City, and just um, what did yeah. you feel? Not to get you emotional. Uh, but. It, it was a, a bit overwhelming. I mean, it's just a huge city to begin yeah, with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But just getting back to seeing family I hadn't seen so long, getting reconnected with the food, and and uh, you know, just so much the uh, music, ex- huh? the the music there, the live performing arts uh, is really growing there as well. So it was just a really nice moment to reconnect with that other half of me. Wow, I, lo- I love that you said that. See, ladies and gentlemen, we open another domain right now for our <laughs> next chat. A um, couple of last questions for you, uh, Chris. Um, if if people are inspired right now after this chat to join SPA for somehow to to join, they're passionate about music, but they don't know where to start, where to begin. What do you tell them? Well, I would say go to our website, okay. SPA, S-P-A-A dot A-E, mm. and uh, check out our programs. We have a lot uh, of exciting programs, okay. and just recently we launched our MFA program, so you can get a Master of Fine Arts as well. Mm. So if you're looking at undergraduate programs, we have BA uh, programs in acting, musical wow. theater, production arts, mm. also a Trinity Level 6 diploma in dance. And if you already have an uh, undergraduate degree and you're mm-hmm. looking at other options, we have uh, master's programs in set and costume design, in directing, and in producing, with more programs to be added in the coming years. There's something for everybody. There's something for everybody. And we have a college of music that is yeah. currently being built. Yes. Uh, Can so we talk a little bit about that? I'm trying to find more information, but I'm not I'm not able to get any. Yeah, I mean, it's still what uh, can you say? just in the starting phases, okay. but the construction has started. Nice. Uh, and I believe the last time I heard, uh, they're looking at 2020. Six uh, intake for the first admissions. Oh. So definitely keep your uh, eyes focused on the social media channels and uh, for further announcements. But lots of excitement for the performing arts in Sharjah. Man, amazing. Um, Chris, you received your what, Bachelor of Music, um, you know, a degree in, in piano, performance, and of course, from uh, what is it, Carleton University? Yep. Uh, and a Master, mashallah, of Arts, degree in music and music education from Columbia University in New York. Um, you have had so much experience throughout, and I think the last question would be, um, what would the legacy of Chris Santiam be? What would you want to leave to the people? The reason why I say this is this. There's an old Bedouin saying. Uh, it says in Arabic, which means a human being with no impact has no life. And I feel you've already impacted so many people uh, already. What would you want the legacy of Chris to be? Mm. Yeah, I know, being philosophical on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, in short, it would yeah. be that the performing arts are part of who we are. It's Ooh. it's not uh, an optional mm. part of who we are. I oh, think God. telling stories. Oh man! Wait, <laughs> wait! <laughs> this is it. This is what I want. Yo, Allah. 
I tell you why. I tell you why I'm excited to say that. The way you said it, it has to be the norm. It has to be from within. And what an amazing, very unselfish thing to think about. And that's how you know much about the human being. I asked him anything. He can think about anything. What he said was, for it to be included in, in our humanity, right? As a, as, a, as a given. That's what you mean, right? Yeah. And whether it's through dance, whether yeah. it's through theater, whether, whether it's musical theater, whether it's design, telling stories is part of who we are. Mm. That's all I know. <laughs> I, man, but I love it. I, I truly, truly love it. And I think that uh, storytelling generally, like for me, I'm a, I'm a fan of hip hop and I got into hip hop because it's the storytelling. When I hear Nas, right? Um, he takes me to New York and I've never been mm. to New York for example. He takes me to New York, New York, you know, city and then the vibe. Um, this is what I liked. Um, but man, oh man, what? I can't end this interview right now. But uh, Chris Santian, thank you so much. What's the best way to follow you? I know that you have an Instagram page. Um, but it's on the it's it's on the private. Is there any any other way to to reach out to you or connect with you somehow, some way? Yes, absolutely. And the timing is just right because I'm just about to launch a website. Oh, so Chris, should be in the okay. next week is or so. Chris Santian. So the Chris Santian. So double S C H R I S S A N T I L L A N website. Com. Oh man, yes. a website! I can't wait to see the website. Thank you. Pretty excited. <laughs> I'm super excited, too. And of course, you know, part of the Sharjah Performing Arts Academy, ladies and gentlemen, amazing human being, amazing guy, so cool, lead to it and music director. Thank you so much, Chris, for your time. Any last words you'd like to say, maybe to your students, to your family, anybody listening, now is your time. What do you tell them? Well, I'd just love to send a message to everyone who is supporting the performing arts, whether it's as an audience member, as a performer, as uh, someone working backstage. I uh, just am really excited about everything happening here in Sharjah. And Let's keep up this amazing work. And we're so happy to have you. Uh, what do we end with, Chris? What do we say goodbye to the people with? Well, I think it'd be great to go back to the beginning. Um, another uh, big influence to me was uh, Benny Anderson, the pianist of ABBA. So he did a wonderful recording uh, with Deutsch Gramophone uh, a few years ago. Okay. And he um, does a great solo piano version of Thank You for the Music. And to show gratitude for the music and the arts, how about we leave it with this? I, thank you for the music. I kind of want to see a reaction when we're doing, we're doing this live. Um, what, why does this mean a lot to you? Well, there's two reasons. I mean, uh, just uh, an icon mm -hmm. uh, musician who I looked up to uh, for, for so long as I was learning music. And I think it's just this idea of being grateful. This? Uh, yes. <laughs> and the sound of the piano, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, Achi, my brother. This is incredible. Chris Santia, it's an honor to meet you. Thank you so much for, you know, arranging the time, but what a way to end. See, this is why he's the guy. He directs this. He does this. Just take us on a journey, you know, from Elton John to this, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. Thank you so much, Chris. Really appreciate you. Have a good night, you guys. Chris, thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate you. Let's enjoy this. Have a good night. Man, oh, man. We'll catch you on a new episode of Catch a Vibe real, real soon.